Hey, Fabio. Hey, Brandon. What's going on? Hey, you reading some EGs here? Yeah, this is my first of the day, and uh, I was lucky enough to capture a seizure. Oh, let's see it. Yeah, take a look. Looks like he's drowsy here. Oh. Yeah, look at this. Beautiful seizure. Wait, are you, you're talking about this? Yeah, bitemporal. I think it starts on the right temporal. Um, what's the patient doing right here? Is anything or? I think she's just drowsy. It's electrographic seizure. Before you go out and prescribe AEDs, I think we should call in Dan Weber. Oh, yeah. He's, he's going to have slap you around, probably. <laughs> oh, look. There he is right there. Oh, wow. Welcome. Thanks. Welcome. Thanks. We've got a problem here. Fabio is about to prescribe anti-seizure medicines for life to this poor person. Yeah, that you have to say about that. Best choice, although it does happen quite frequently. Mm -hmm. I think this is one of our, our friendly neighborhood normal variants. Yeah! Mm. Well, Fabio, why do you think it was a seizure? It's coming from the temporal lobe. Everything that comes from the temporal <laughs> lobe is a seizure. It's a hey. otherwise. Don't tell our surgeon. We'll, we'll get a right anterior <laughs> temporal lobectomy before the end of the show. <laughs> Actually, I'm, I'm just kidding. That's, that was, uh, that's a different surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. No, so yeah, so I thought it was pretty, pretty uh, uh, sp spiky looking or sharply contoured to say the least. And um, I, th I think it kind of evolves a little bit and it's pretty fast. The right location, temporal lobe, it just scared me. This definitely stood out, you know? You seen that so, before, Dan? Yeah. So you see this nice little notched appearance you got going on there. It looks like you have. A theta rhythm, about six-ish hertz with an overriding maybe alpha to make it look that notched way. Mm -hmm. That's pretty classic of a normal variant that is exactly how its name sounds and I think describes this pretty good. So mm -hmm. like you said, it looks pretty rhythmic, right? Mm -hmm. uh, right over the mid-temporal regions, bilateral in this case. Yeah, and yeah. we said it was theta rhythm. Mm -hmm. And you said at the beginning, the patient's drowsy. And that's exactly the name of this normal variant. Rhythmic mid-temporal theta of drowsiness. It's not often we get a name that actually is what it says it is. <laughs> Did I spell it right? Yeah, so it depends. Some glory uh, around it there. Some people <laughs> make MT, the mid-temporal one word, some make it too. So I've seen it RMTD and RMTPD. Yeah. Also rhythmic temporal theta bursts of drowsiness. Mm -hmm. Historically, it was called the psychomotor variant because mm -hmm. you're not the only person who's thought it might be a seizure. See, that's a tough one. Why, why did they call it psychomotor variant? Because it can look similar to temporal seizures or psychomotor seizures mm -hmm. of yesteryear, uh, but it doesn't really evolve uh, well like a seizure should. So the, mm -hmm. the theta mm -hmm. frequency stays pretty consistent throughout. Usually it goes on for... A couple seconds up to 15 seconds on average this mm -hmm. one might be a little bit on the longer side but mm -hmm. well, what does the patient typically do during one of these if you were to talk to them or wake them up yeah they should be doing nothing they should be fine in this case they're just sitting around being drowsy uh, so the concern would be getting confused for an electrographic seizure like you were talking about before mm -hmm. and it's just one of those normal variants to be on the lookout for to not confuse Mm -hmm. uh, for an epileptic form abnormality, because you don't want to overcall this and commit this person to seizure medications for mm -hmm. the indefinite future. Mm -hmm. But at least it increases the risk, right? And I, I'm not going to call it a normal study, though. Yeah, no, it's, uh, that was the original concern, but it seems at this point that there's no longer any sort of correlation between epilepsy and RMTD. Uh, it's seen in about, depending on which study you look at, up to 2% of the population. Uh, mm -hmm. normal included. Mm -hmm. uh, it should be usually bilateral or bilateral independent. If you do have a study where it's always on one side, mm -hmm. uh, just like with lots of normal variants, that could be pathologic. Can we look at, to the end of this one, Fabio? Mm -hmm. Keep going. Kind of comes and goes sometimes. Yeah, and sometimes this one's a little more on the right, sometimes a little more on the left, right. as you'd like it to be. Right. Not rare in adults and later adolescents. Mm -hmm. There have been cases of it reported here and there in mm -hmm. kids, but usually it's more of a older finding.
We usually go over the six IFCN criteria for this. And I did do that before you guys joined in and that kind of convinced me. So maybe we can do that too. Please. Oh yeah, let's go through them. Although I'm wondering, like, yeah. suppose before we do this though, let's just mm -hmm. think through the logic though. So if, if this, uh, if it qualifies and I'm not sure it will, uh, would that make this a seizure? Yeah. I, don't, I don't think it would. But if it's, isn't it like it's more than 2.25 rhythmic discharge in 10 seconds? Mm. Well, Dr. Hurst taught us the other day. Oh, I see. Hmm. So okay. I would argue that uh, because as Dr. Weber just told us, this is a pretty well recognized um, mm -hmm. normal variant, right? And so it has, it's kind of been studied as, a, as, a, as an, an an entity, and we know that it doesn't have any associations with epilepsy now. I think that's, mm -hmm. that's so once, once we recognize it as having the right characteristics and we categorize it in that way, then I think it's, it's off the hook. It's immune. It's, yeah, it's immune to Dr. Hirsch. Mm -hmm. Okay, but let's go through it. I'm, I'm not sure these really count as epileptiform discharges anyway. You, you made me made me think like a robot. I would just look at this. I would just go through the criteria in my head and just call it a spike. Ah, uh, I'm I'm a little bit proud of you in a way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll take the first one because it's easy. It's spiky. Okay. It's the okay. one point. You gotta you gotta remind us the other ones. Uh, I think two was the um, the uh, width of the uh, the duration of the uh, waveform. Different from the background. Different from the background, yeah. What do you think? Well. In this case, though, the background is, um, it's all this stuff. Oh, help so this, this is an ongoing rhythm of some kind. Mm -hmm. So it blends in and out. Yeah. So no points there, it's just one? I'd say probably not. Okay. Third is the symmetry. Um, I think it's asymmetric. I think the upgoing slope is a little bit steeper than the downgoing slope, so one point. I don't know, I think it's two separate waveforms you see in there. I think you see a theta wave and then there's an alpha wave on top of that theta wave. Mm -hmm. So each individual wave to me looks pretty symmetric. It's just that sometimes you have one wave on top of the other wave. Mm -hmm. So it looks, that combination of two looks asymmetric. And that's mm -hmm. what's been classically described with this as the notched appearance that sort of mm -hmm. starts sloping up and then rapid uptick and then back down. Superposition of, of some theta and alpha waves. Yeah. Yep. Okay, okay so any of the waves individually are, are truly asymmetric or if they're just adding up to be asymmetric looking. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It stands out. This doesn't, doesn't stand out. Yeah. yeah so. it's, it's got too many friends nearby. Yeah. Okay. And after going slow wave? No. Mm -hmm. And field? Probably yes. Switch to, <clears throat> to average. Yeah, it has a field. Yeah. Okay. So we have spiky field. That's it, right? Just two then, right? Two out of four. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> That's true. Not making it. Cool. Good. So normal All study. Right. Okay. I'll switch up the report. Oh. Now, does this does this always occur in, in drowsiness, Dan, or is it? Uh, do you see it in N two or N three? So C2? you can see it in light sleep. Uh, again, it, there's cases of it being reported as deep as REM, but mm -hmm. it's very uncommon. You really have to be sure you know what you're looking at when it's in NREM or REM sleep. But hmm. restful wakefulness, drowsiness, and light sleep are the common places to see this. Cool. In REM, you said. There's been just a case of it. What? Yeah. I haven't That's seen actual wonder. tracing, but. What kind of dream does that person have? <laughs> They're dreaming of RMTD, I think. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for saving this person's, uh, saving this person from some side effects for probably the next 30 years or so. Yeah. 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 All right. Thanks, Dan.